ஹலோ ஹோப் யூ ஆர் என்ஜாயிங் மை இன்டீரியர் மாடலிங் லெசன்ஸ் இன் திஸ் டியூட்டோரியல் ஐ இல் எக்ஸ்பிளைன் த ப்ரொசீஜர் டு கிரியேட் எ காமன்லி யூஸ்ட் இன்டீரியர் மாடல் தேட் இஸ் எ கவுண்டர் டாப் ஒன்ஸ் யூ ஆர் ஃபெமிலியர் வித் த ப்ரொசீஜர் டு கிரியேட் திஸ் கவுண்டர் டாப் யூ கேன் கிரியேட் சிமிலர் ஆப்ஜெக்ட்ஸ் விச் ஆர் யூஸ்ட் இன் த இன்டீரியர்ஸ் சச் ஆஸ் கிச்சன் கேபினெட்ஸ் வார்ட்ரோப்ஸ் லாஃப்ட் கேபின்ஸ் எக்ஸெட்ரா பிஃபோர் ஐ ஸ்டார்ட் ஆஃப் ஐ வுட் லைக் டு இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் த வேரியஸ் பார்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் திஸ் ஆப்ஜெக்ட் A countertop has a slab on top. Then we have cabinets over here. And you can see the handles to operate the cabinets. Then of course, the skirting at the bottom. Next, we will see the dimensions of these objects. The height of the countertop is 80 cm. Its width is 60 cm. And its length is 300 cm. And the thickness of the slab is 2.5 cm. and the height of the skirting is 10 cm and the height of the cabinet is 67.5 cm you can just note down these dimensions so that you can input precise values while you create this object we will start with the cabinets to create the cabinets we have to make a rectangle with the dimension of 60 by 300 then we have to extrude it through a height of 67.5 so let's do that before i create the rectangle I should keep the cabin's layer as a current layer. So I'll go to layer panel and I'll set the cabin layer as the active layer. Now, I'll create a rectangle using the rectangle tool. So I'll click on that. It will ask me to pick the first corner. I'll select the first corner over here. Then I'll go to the dimensions and I'll specify the length of the rectangle as 300 cm and its width as 60 cm. Now it will ask you to specify the other corner. I will just click to specify the other corner. Now I will go to a southwest isometric view by clicking on the view cube. Now I will extrude this rectangle through a height of 67.5. So I will click on extrude and I will select the rectangle and I will give a height of 67.5. Now it is extruded. You know that width of each cabin is 50 cm. the total length of the counter top is 300 cm so i can have six cabinets all together so i should divide this entire length into six equal parts but before i divide i must align the ucs with the front face of the cabinet so i'll go to view tab and i'll select the front from the coordinate palette so i'll select front now i'll draw a line over here okay from this point to this point now i should divide this line into six equal parts so i can give divide command so i'll type the letter div then select the line to be divided then i should give the number of segments that is 6 when you divide an object in autocad the software places points along its length in such a way that the distance between each points will be the same but in this case the points are not visible because they are just dots so you have to change the display representation of points it can be done with the help of the ddp type command so i'll type the letter ddp type now you can see various point styles out of which i'll select this particular representation and i'll just give okay now the points are visible next i'll draw a line connecting this node to perpendicular so you should make sure that these two options are active in the osnap menu so just right click in the osnap button and go to settings and just make sure that your node is active and you should also enable the perpendicular if it is not active now i'll draw a line from this node to perpendicular it is drawn next i'll create a rectangle so i'll select the rectangle tool and i'll click my first corner over here and the opposite corner over here now i can offset this rectangle through a distance of 7.5 cm so i gave offset and when i'm asked to give the distance i give 7.5 then i'll select the object to offset select this polyline and pick this inside point as a side to offset okay next you can erase this outer profile which you are used for the offset so i'll go to erase and i'll select this outer profile it's no longer required you select that and just give an enter to get rid of it next we will offset this line through 0.5 cm to both sides so i'll go to offset command and i'll give an offset distance of 0.5 and uh, select object to offset i'll select this and pick the side and 
object is this and side is this. This center line you can erase. So I gave erase and I have erased the center line. Next we will connect these two endpoints with the polyline. So I'll give a polyline and I'll connect these two endpoints. Okay. Then you should also connect these two endpoints. Okay. So I'll give polyline again and connect that. Now all these lines can be joined to form a single profile. So you just go to modify and select join and you select these two and this particular line as well as the bottom line. Now you have made that as a single profile. You know that between each cabinets there will be a groove. We are actually planning to create that groove with this rectangle. And each cabinet door will have a depression. We will create the depression or recess using this rectangle. You can see that in the finished model. So this is the groove I was talking about between each cabinets. And this is the depression which you see on the cabinet door. By making use of these rectangles we will do that. So I will go to extrude and I will select this profile and the height of extrusion is minus 1. I will give minus 1 to create the groove and I will select this object to extrude and here the height of extrusion is minus 2 to create the recess on the door. Now these objects are to be copied onto the rest of the locations. So I will go to copy, I will select these two objects, base point is this node and you can select multiple second points to get the copies on different locations. So altogether I have made 5 copies of it. Now you can erase this line which you have used for the division as well as these points because these objects are no longer required. So just go to erase command and you select the line to be erased. Okay. Now you can get rid of these points by going to DDP type dialog again and you select the representation of point to null representation. When you select this representation the points will be temporarily hidden. Next we have to perform a subtraction. So I'll go to subtract and I'll select this box. Just give an enter and you have to select all these extruded objects using a window. So I'll select it using a window. Now the subtraction has taken place. You can change the visual style to realistic and see what you have done. And next we have to create beveled projection on the cabinet door. Just as you see here this projection is to be made. So I have already created a layer uh, called uh, cabin in because I want this object to be kept in this layer. Before we create the projection, let's take a close look on the side of the projection. See, it has got a curvular side and a flat cover. So we have to create a curvular side first. So I'll go back to my file and I'll change the visual style to wireframe. I'll start with the polyline and from this mid, I'll go 4 cm straight up and 2 cm in the x direction. Then I'll switch over to arc option. Then I'll take second point and I'll pick my second point here. Then the next point here. Then you come back to this point and you can just give a close to exit the polyline command. This is a profile which is to be extruded. Now I'll align the UCS with the front face by going to view front option from the coordinate palette. I'll again go to polyline to provide the path. I'll start from this point, second point is this, next point is this one, this one I'll pick, come back to this and close. And this profile can be extruded. So go to extrude, select this profile and go to path option, click on path and you select the path which is the most recently drawn one and just give an enter. So we have made that curved lateral surface of the beveled edge. You can switch over to realistic and you can see what you have done. I'll just orbit it and you can see the curvular beveled face. Okay, but we have an opening over here and this opening is to be covered. For that, I'll again go back to polyline and I'll start a polyline exactly from this end point and I'll come to this point. I'll go straight up to this point and I'll close it. Now we have made a polyline boundary. Now we have to create a surface to close this opening. So you have a command in AutoCAD called region. I'll type R E G I O N for region and you are asked to select the objects. I'll give L to select the most recently drawn object. The letter L stands for last. 
so it simply creates a surface from the boundary okay so we have made that projection inside the cabin door apart from the projection which you have made on the cabin door there is also a beading which is running around the door so we have to create this beading in fact this beading is residing in the cabin layer so let's go back to the project file and i'll make the cabin layer as the current layer again and i'll change the visual style to wireframe and i'll start with a polyline and i'll start from this end point to this point and i'll come to this one to this point and close now i'll give offset to offset this polyline 1 cm outward so i'll give 1 cm and this is the object to offset and this is a side to offset now let's extrude both these profiles through a distance of 1 cm so i'll select this profile the offset profile as well as this one through a distance of 1 cm now we have to subtract from the outer box this inner box to create the beading now let's shade it go back to realistic representation and see what you have done so this is the beading now we have to copy the beading as well as the projection on rest of the locations so i'll give copy and i'll select the beading the beveled uh, lateral surface and the region all the objects this is the base point and this is the second point you have to take uh, corresponding points another second point over here another one like which you can go on copying okay now we have created the cabinets we have uh, made all the necessary elements in the cabinets next we will create the skirting but before we make the skirting we have to keep the layer active i'll go back to the skirting layer and i'll just click to make it active layer now we have to create a profile and extrude it along a path to make it so i'll start with the polyline and i'll start from this point and i'll go straight down 10 cm because you know that's the height of the skirting then i'll move 5 cm leftward then i'll go to arc option then i'll select second point and i'll pick a point over here then you come to this point then you pick the next end point here i'll again go back to second point because i want to change the curvature of the arc so i'll go to second again i'll click the second point and i'll pick the end point here then you finish the arc by clicking the end point at this location Now you can just close it to go out of the polyline command. You can do a bit of grip editing to fine tune the shape if required. Okay, so I'll just slightly you know push it down. So this is the shape of the profile to be extruded. Now we have to make the path, but the path is to be drawn like this over here. So obviously you have to align the UCS on the top plane. So I'll go to View. I'll select Top from the Coordinate Palette. Now let's make a polyline to create the path. I'll just pick points. Okay, I'll pick this end point and I'll come back to this point. I've finished it. Now we have to extrude it. So come to extrude, select this profile. Okay, then just give an enter. Now go to path option and click this path. So this is how you make the skirting. Next we will create a slab on top. So we have to keep the slab layer as the current layer. I'll start with a polyline and I'll click the end points. Okay. Now I'll select this end point and give an enter. And uh, the slab has got a projection of 2.5 cm or 1 inch. So we have to give an offset of 2.5 cm. And I'll select this object and I'll click the side. Okay. and you can just erase this line because it's no longer required okay now we have to close this profile it's an open polyline so it has to be closed so i'll go to modify and you can select p edit okay or else you can give polyline edit command or p edit command and select this and just give a close you have a first option as close here just click on that so the open polyline got closed this can be extruded through a height of 2.5 cm So that slab thickness is created. Next, I'll perform fillet on this edge to avoid sharp corner. So I'll go to fillet tool and select this edge. It will ask you to specify the radius. Type 2.5 as radius and just give an enter. It got filleted. 
Okay, this is the fillet you have created. Next, we have to create the handle. So, I'll keep the handle layer as the current layer. And I'll change the visual representation to 2D wireframe. It'll be better if you can create one more viewport while creating the handle. So, I'll go to view tab and I'll go to viewport configuration and I'll select two vertical viewport. I'll activate this viewport and I'll keep a friend view in this viewport. So, I'll select a friend from here. Okay, I have a friend view here. This is to precisely locate the handle. And I'll magnify this area and I'll create the handle here. While creating the handle, you have to align the UCS with the left face. So, I'll go to view tab and I'll click on left from the coordinate palette. Now, UCS is aligned to the left. Now, I'll select a polyline. Then, I'll go to shift right click and I'll select nearest option from the OSNAP menu. And I'll click a point somewhere over here. It's just a random point. And I'll give a distance of 3 cm. I'll give 3 cm and I'll move straight down 9 cm. 9 cm and I'll just move leftward 3 cm. Now I'll fillet this polyline using the polyline option of fillet command. So I'll go to fillet and I'll give a radius of 2 cm. Now it'll ask you to select the polyline. So just go to polyline and select the polyline to be filleted. Now both the corners got filleted simultaneously. Next I'll draw a circle. I'll go to circle tool. I'll select center radius, pick the center and the radius is 0.6 cm. Okay, now I'm going to sweep the circle. So I'll select sweep tool and it'll ask you to select the object to sweep is this. I have selected, just given enter. Now it'll ask you to select the sweep path. This is the path along which the circle is to be swept. So the handle is created. But if you look at this viewport, you can see that you have made the handle over here. Now it has to be properly positioned. So I'll go to move command and select the object to be moved. Base point, you just pick anywhere. Okay, but you should turn off the O snap when you do this. I'll press F3 to turn it off. And I'll pick my second point over here. Okay, now it's properly positioned. Now this has to be mirrored onto the side. So I'll just go to mirror. I'll select this object to be mirrored. This midpoint, just turn on O snap. This, this midpoint is the base point. And turn the ortho mode on by pressing the F8 key. I just click it to define the vertical axis. Now it got mirrored. Now you can have several mirror images to complete the handles on all cabins. So I'll go to mirror again. Okay, select these two together. You can select this midpoint is the first point on the mirror line. Just pick to define a vertical axis. Just give it, just give an enter. Now we have to have one more mirror image over here. Okay, so I'll give mirror again, give an enter. Select these two objects. Uh, this mid is the base point and pick to define the vertical axis, give an enter. So we have created all the handles. Now we'll change the visual style to realistic and we will assign a granite finish to the slab. So I'll go to render tab and click on material browser. Here I have stone, the granite section and you select uh, the rough red color. I'll select the granite slab and select the rough red finish and just right click and assign to selection. You will see this material applied on the slab. I'll close the material browser and I'll go back to single viewport configuration. So I'll click on view and a single. Okay, now we have completed the countertop tutorial. You can also try out various possibilities of this tutorial. In this example, I have changed the design of the cabin door to curved edges from straight edges, which can give you interesting result. Likewise, feel free to experiment on your own. Now that you have successfully made your countertop and it can be used in almost all your future projects, whether it's a living room, pantry or a study room, wherever you need storage. How will you precisely insert it in another drawing? For that, you have to re-specify the base point of this drawing using the base command. So I'll give base command and I'll select the midpoint of the bottom back edge as the base point because that is the right point to be chosen as the base point. Now I can save my file. Please click on the link shown on this video to know more about the base command. So this is the right time to conclude. Thanks for your patience and time. Hope you will make the best use of this video.
I'll catch you in my next video. All the best.